Hey y'all, this is Amanda and welcome back to my Texas Zone 8 A Garden. And today we're on the side yard and we're gonna be working on replacing some planters and utilizing the lasagna method where we're gonna layer bulbs, angles, perennials, all into one container so that I have beautiful outlook on the container throughout all of the seasons. Okay, so let's talk about the plants that we're going to be utilizing today in these containers. Now, I am doing a lasagna type container, meaning there's gonna be multiple layers of bulbs, annuals, perennials. They're all gonna be layered up and different things are gonna take um, the, you know, the number one show, be the spotlight of the container at different points in the year. And this will allow me to have a container that really flows from season to season instead of having to completely redo a container each season. So the centerpiece that we're going to be starting with is an Italian stone pine. Now, I actually utilize these pines on my uh, mantle for Christmas. And this is something you typically see in my particular zone in my area for Christmas decor. And in Italian um, stone pine, they are hardy to zone um, eight, my particular zone. They don't like to get much colder than about 20 degrees. So if you do end up having like really low temps lower than that for an extended amount of time, it might cause some damage to the Italian stone pine. Um, they're not giant growers when they're in a container. If you put them in the ground, these suckers can get really big, about a foot every year, and they can go wild. I'm going to be working with mine in the container, and it can be pruned to keep it relatively small. So that's really great for me. Um, but it'll be in a container. They do prefer dry climates. Um, they don't like a lot of moisture. So also that's a benefit of putting it in a container instead of the ground. Particularly in my area, we get, you know, times where we get rain all month and we have a lot of clay soil, which retains a lot of moisture. So putting it in a container will give me, you know, more um, control over its environment. It's going to be going on the west side. So it is going to be a nice, hot, dry area. And I do have two of these because I use both of these on the container. So it's one for each container. They are different sizes but they'll even out over time. I'm not stressed about it. I like that I'm getting to use these plants twice, which is really nice. Now, the lasagna container. I'm gonna be layering some bulbs in. The first bulb I'm gonna be working with is Big Eartha. These bulbs are, these tulip bulbs are from Color Blends. This particular tulip is a mid-season bloomer, shades of pink and rose. The height is about 24 to 26 inches tall. So when these start to grow and bloom, they're actually gonna dwarf the size of the Italian pine at one particular time. The Italian pine will disappear, especially in these earlier years when it is so much smaller. So it actually will end, end up encapsulating the pine and you won't really see it for a little while while we're dealing with um, the tulip bulbs. These tulips um, need to be planted about five inches deep. Tulips in zone 8a, they need to have a um, cold period and we don't have consistent enough cold in our area to just plant tulips in the ground and hope that they'll do well. They certainly don't typically come back in our area very often. Like today, you know, we're mid-January and it's 80 degrees off today. And so these have actually been in the refrigerator for like almost 10 weeks now. So you need a minimum of six to eight weeks of your tulips to be pre-chilled in your refrigerator, refrigerator, not freezer, in your refrigerator. And then after that, you can plant them out in your landscape. Since it is so warm, these will probably pop up really quick, but we are expecting the temps to cool off by this next Saturday. So I have a couple more days and the temps will be cooler. So the big earth of tulips, now I'm also going to be layering in some peppermint stick tulips, which are very petite, tiny tulips. They're only about eight inches tall. You know, they're very small, four to eight, four to six inches tall, very small. But this particular variety, I was told by one of the ladies at Callaway's that this particular variety will naturalize in my area. So by planting these, these should come back year after year, which I think will be really fun to have in those containers. Um, it looks like I'm going to be planting these three inches deep um, in the soil line, and it says nine bulbs through per square foot. So I'm probably going to cluster these, and I think there's nine in each of these. So I think I'm 
going to do them in a cluster of four and a cluster of five instead of like spreading them all out in the front of the pot. I think that'll be nice. So next I'm going to add a couple of kind of hardy winter hardy angles. This is some Swiss chard. If we get really freezing temps, um, really, really cold temps for an extended amount of time, this will die back, but I can also kind of cover it. I think that'll be nice to add in a couple of things of Swiss chard. I recently picked these up from Covington's in Rowlett, Texas, um, and they were all 50% off. I'm also going to do um, two, so one in each container. This is a trailing pansy called Free Fall White, and its um, blooms will kind of trail down, which would be really pretty. And then I bought a flat, this is also from Covington's 50% off, a flat of a mix of pansies and violas. The yellow pansy right here is called, or viola, is viola penny clear yellow. And it's an annual and they do really great in my area. This one right here, this um, one with kind of a ruffly look to it is called frizzle swizzle blue. And I got, I think, four of those. And then I got four of these larger pansies up here, which I don't see a tag for them, but it's, it's like one of the block or blotch, whatever, block or blotch pansies in a deep purple or deep blue. So that looks really, really pretty. So let's go ahead and get these put in the containers and I'll show you each of the process as I put each of the plants in. point on is where my microphone broke and I did not get any of my words or any of my speaking during this portion but these are the containers that I currently have on the side garden and I just really felt like their particular shape and scale was not working for the side I have two of them and when I first put them in I expressed that concern and a lot of y'all actually agreed with me and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by removing this purple fountain grass which is very dead and not a perennial in my area and then I'm going to pull out the drip lines that are in there as well and we're going to go ahead and get this pot out of the way and I'll show you what the new one's going to look like. Okay, the new one is also one of those fiberglass kind of lightweight containers. I typically utilize these a lot for larger containers because I move around most of the things myself and I don't have like a tractor or anything crazy like that to left like solid concrete pieces. And I am a person who likes to change up my garden quite a bit. So I like this more standard container without the kind of small foot of it. Um, it has a much larger opening at the top. It's much more solid and substantial and I feel like it really fits the space a whole lot better. So let's go ahead and get it filled up with soil. I'm just using a standard potty mix right here. Each of these containers took about one and a half bags. All I'm doing is dumping it in here and then if there's any really big clumps that are kind of solid I'm just using my hands to kind of break that up and smooth it out. start layering in the tulips. I'm going to start with the big earthen tulips because they need to be about five inches deep and you can see the level of the current soil is right about that point. So I'm going to utilize half of these tulips. So there's 25 in one bag. I'm going to utilize half of them. So 12 to 13 in each container and I'm going to make sure that when I'm planting them, I'm planting the pointy side of the bulb upright. Once I've got my tulips in place, I'll go ahead and top it off with more soil up to the top of the container, and then I'll be ready to plant my evergreen and the additional winter annuals. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plant the Italian stone pine towards the back of the container. I know that's a little odd, and I originally was thinking that I would put it in the center of the container as well, but the more I thought about it, the more I really wanted to make sure I had room towards the front of the container for annuals. and. I think that'll be really fun for especially this time when the evergreen is so small and then in the future if I decide to I can always move it towards the center of the pot as well. I was really excited to see the vibrant kind of red magenta tones of this Swiss chard. I think it's really fun for this time of year. I am going to go ahead and plant it towards the side and when I'm digging I'm being sure to be aware of the tulips that are already planted below. I don't want to interact with them or knock them over or anything. So I did rough up the bottom of the Swiss chard to make it fit into place. 
For the trailing pansies, I wanted them kind of off to the side because I'm hoping that they'll just trail over the over the side of the pot. And I kind of angle them a little bit towards the rim of the pot so that I'm kind of encouraging them to go that direction already. And now I'm gonna fill back in with the additional pansies and violas. I'm putting kind of the taller blotch or block pansies towards the center, and then I'm gonna fill in below it utilizing the Frizzle Swizzle Deep Blue Pansies and the Penny Yellow Violas. I think it's really bright, beautiful, and colorful. to add in the peppermint stick tulips. The bulbs are so tiny and they only go about three inches below the soil. So I knew I was gonna get in their way when I was planting the annuals. So at this point, I'm just kind of making a hole and I'm putting just a grouping of four and five or three or whatever in each of these kind of little areas. These are more of an experiment for me this year. I would love to see if they decide to naturalize in these pots. If they do, that's fun. And then I might plan for a bigger installment in the future. pleased with the look of them. They are vibrant. They are beautiful. I love the pops of the green and the yellow and the red and the purple blue. I think it works really well. And I really like the scale of the container. When I stand back, I feel like it fits the house better than the other one did. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm still going to be utilizing those other containers, but I just really enjoy this look. So now the other one is over here on the other side and right there. So I'm going to go ahead and knock that one out and show you what everything looks like in the end. today's video just seeing kind of how I wanted a different look for those planters the other ones just they didn't have the right shape and size 
to changing these out and then layering in several options so that I don't have to change these out every season if I don't want to. Now I can change and add in some annuals, but it's always nice to have that evergreen that'll just grow in place in those planters, which will be really nice. All right, make sure you check out the community tab on my YouTube channel. I've been working more on that, adding more than that because I've had lots of people say they don't utilize any of the other social media platforms and that's no problem at all. So feel free to check that out. You just go to my channel and there's a, um, a tab that says community and I try to up update that daily on different things that I'm doing. You can also check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all.